let's take a look at this, this situation of a person buying stuff. Let's just say that what we do is we have three, two different stores. One store has a sale and it's selling soup, let's say Campbell's soup for 79 cents. And it's got a sign that says no limit per person. And this next store has the same sale, Campbell's soup for 79 cents. But they've got a sign that says limit 12 per person. Okay, so this store, if you wanted 100 cans of soup, you could get 100. And this store, if you wanted 100 cans of soup, you could get 12. Or you could come back eight times. Which of those signs do you think sell more? Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to mention something here. In this class, we do all sorts of things where you vote, you raise your hand, you, you yell things out at different times. And it's not really, it doesn't make me feel great if you end up being in the third group, which is the group that I just assume just doesn't understand what's going on. Okay, so if I say, how many people say yes, how many people say no? It'd be great to see everybody else raise your hand, because if you're the third group, I just assume that something's not going on right. Okay, so how many <clears throat> people think that the store that has soup with a no limit sign will sell more soup? How many people think that <clears throat> the store that has a limit 12 will sell, sell more? Yeah, you know, what's crazy about this is we end up finding that when we do this study, Typically, what goes on here is people will buy, uh, on average, about 3.1 cans of soup if it just says, soup, 79 cents, no limit. Here, what happens is these crazy people end up buying more like seven cans of soup. Okay? Let's say there's another context, and this is the context where we're going to be having <clears throat> one for one dollar. In this case, we have a the store that says three for three dollars. There's, there's, let's say it's tuna fish they're selling. One can for one dollar. This store says three for three dollars. How many think that this store is going to sell more tuna fish? How many people think this store is going to sell more tuna fish? Yeah, it's crazy. It's almost 30% more is what they sell. Let's do this one more time. Let's look at this where we say buy some for the weekend. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to um, Wawa's. Does anybody ever ever heard of the store Wawa's? Where's Wawa's at? Anybody? Yeah, Philadelphia. Maryland. Maryland too. Yeah, it's, it's headquartered just outside of Philadelphia. Yeah. So we're going to go to Wawa's and we're going to put signs up in some Wawa's that say apples. Buy some for the weekend. We're also going to do it with Snicker Bars. We say, Snicker Bars, buy some for the weekend. Then at a bunch of the other Wawa stores, we're going to put a sign that says, buy 18 for the weekend. Which just seems about the stupidest thing you could <laughs> imagine. Which Wawa is going to sell more apples and more Snicker Bars? The one that says, buy some for the weekend? Or the one that says buy 18 for the weekend. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> we have these sort of these random things we found, but we don't have a reason why they happen. We're just, just like, wow, that's pretty cool. What do you think is going on here? What would be the explanation if you were kind of Sherlock Holmes? What might be one of the explanations as to why people a sign that said limit 12 sold more? Yeah. People anchor toward that. Tell me your name, please. May. May. Thank you, May. She says what happens is people anchor toward a number. So it's sort of an anchoring explanation. And could you explain that just a little bit more, May? Okay. Okay, good, good. What's another explanation is what it happened? Yeah, is it, that's no, uh, Ellen. No, no, Kristen, 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 well, thanks. I, I will because it's making it sound like I'm not going to be able to come back and get any more at that price. So, so I can get as many as I could. 
It's got that real. It's got that scarcity thing going on, doesn't it? Where you come in and say, "Oh God, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I don't do it today, I'm never going to be able to eat soup again." Very good. Yes, sir. Excellent. Tell me your name. Uh, Greg. Greg, thanks, Greg. That's a, it's a great idea. The fact that that's sort of almost, that must be the consumption norm, because if it says by three, that must be what normal people do, and I'm a kind of a normal person. Consumption, or we call it a purchase norm. What could be another reason why this happens? Yeah, way back there. I, I like that. It's, I like that. It's some sort of a entitlement, and we also call that loss aversion in some cases. You see, if you, you you picture yourself doing that. Now the thing about this is that all of these can explain parts of these different studies. Um, they can all explain part of it, but one of these things ends up being a really powerful explanation. And I'll give you a little bit of an idea as to which one it is. This idea of suggestibility and anchoring is so doggone powerful. You, you just, God, you cannot get over it. Um, in fact, we see this in a lot of other contexts, that when somebody suggests a number to you for some reason, you really you start anchoring on that number. And it can be a totally different number than you would have actually come up with in your own volition. So typically, let's say you're shopping for soup. Mm, what do you suppose the basic anchors you have in your, in your mind when nothing's suggested to you? What's the basic number of cans of soup do you think the typical person anchors on, and why? Yeah? Um, probably two. One that you're going to eat right away, and then one for when sometime later in the week. Yeah, so tell, me, tell me your name. Is Ruth, thank you, Ruth. Yeah, it's two or three, because typically that is what most people buy when you buy soup. You know, very people, few people go in and say, I was thinking of a range of 24. You, know, you think, think more like three or something like that. And so what happens when it says no limit, you just pretty much buy that three or four. But what happens when it says limit 12? All of a sudden, you're not anchoring on two or three. What you're anchoring on is 12 and saying, oh, God, that's ridiculous. I'm never going to buy that many. Mm, I'll buy seven. So what happens, it's a tremendous bias. Now where else do you guys see anchoring happen? You may not have called it anchoring, but where else have you seen that happen in your lives or this summer? Uh, excellent, great point. She said what happens, there's a guess the jelly beans game, and the first person put down how many? 2,000 or something. 2,000s, and the next person goes, whoa, no, it's not that high. It's 1,940. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We also saw this if you did any salary negotiation. What happens with the salary negotiation for your summer job, if you got money in your summer job? <clears throat> they said, well, here's what we're paying you. And they said a price, let's say, let me say $3,000 or whatever. You go, oh, $3,000 is so unreasonable. I, 3100 would be better. And so whoever essentially states that first price ends up sort of almost defining the rules of the game because of this anchoring. And that's what we want to learn how to do. We'll learn a bunch of really cool concepts in consumer behavior. But, you know, are you going to be working for a grocery store putting out signs? No, in all likelihood not. But you're going to be in a bunch of cool contexts where you will be able to use these things and so the skill we want to develop <clears throat> is how you shape some of these things and understand them so that you can use them in whatever wacky context you're going to be in. Well, let's take another look at... <clears throat> the supermarket is one of the most familiar shopping environments. We spend 36 hours a year in the supermarket, so we think we're in charge. But as Brian Wonsink's experiment will prove, 
we're not as in control as we think we are. What we're doing today in the store is we've set up some signs to recreate this experiment. What we've done is we've taken an end cap of soup. We have a sign that says, soup, 79 cents. What we'll be doing is we'll be watching how many cans of soup people buy from that end cap. And then what we'll do at intermediate times is we'll switch that with a sign that instead says, soup, 79 cents, limit 12 per person. And we'll see if we find people buying a lot more from the limit 12 sign than from the no limit sign. Based on all the stuff we've done in the past, we're gonna see a big difference. First, Brian set up the no limit sales sign and no one paid much attention. But when Brian put up a sign saying limit 12 cans, it was a different story. How did the shoppers account for their sudden enthusiasm for Campbell's soup? So why do you buy more today? What's going on? Well, there's the sale, and I thought, might as well just stock up. They're not going to go bad, and it's good. Yes, sir. How many cans of soup do you typically buy when you when you come shopping and you see a sign that says 79 cents? Oh, I don't usually buy this many, um, but it's on sale now, so I would buy the limit here. Okay. So I'd probably buy about four normally. Well, I bought eight instead of four or five, so I don't know. <laughs> I guess it worked. It worked to it. <laughs> 